Well, Father, we look to you this morning and we know that, Lord, you're the God who's always in control. And we thank you, Lord, that we've had the privilege, the opportunity to come into your house we're like David of old. David simply stated and declared, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And Lord, David came with a heart that sought the Lord. He came, Lord, with praise. He came with worship. He came seeking to grow. And then he also came seeking to be a blessing. First to you, O Lord, and then to others. Lord, that is our priority today. We've come to bless the Lord. And to declare the greatness and the goodness of our God. We thank you that we hear. Because Lord the blood of Jesus has blotted out our transgressions. Removed every iniquity and stain. And has placed us safely into the family of God. And Lord you have changed our heart. You've changed our life. You've changed our mind. You've changed our eternal destination. And you're continually working in our spirit and in our heart and in our lives. Lord molding and fashioning us. We like as Jeremiah said. He went to the potter's house. And there he saw the potter with the clay. And it was being molded and shaped into a, uh, something that would be beautiful. And that's what you do with our lives. You remove the impurities. You remove the, the things out of our life, Lord, that are not, uh, that, Lord, that are sin stained. But then, Lord, you replace those things with the goodness and the blessings of God. Thank you that, Lord, we have such a mighty God on our side. We plead the blood of Jesus today over this worship. We plead the blood of Jesus over every person and every family in this room. And we just pray that your name will be honored and glorified and exalted here today. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We declare the greatness of our God. Lord, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. May we today lift up our hands, lift up our hearts, lift up our voices in adoration and thanksgiving unto the Lord. The world today will pull us down, but I'm glad we've got a Savior who brings us up and sits us today in heavenly places. And so therefore today, we're not down, we Lord are up because we're in Christ and we're safe in the presence of a mighty God. Oh, pour out your goodness and your blessings. We today proclaim the goodness of our God, the greatness of our God, and declare today that you're going to do something mighty in your house today. And to God be all the honor and the praise and the glory. And all God's children say to hearty what? Amen.
Try that God one. sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to Say 
coming down. Why don't you greet folks? Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Hi, everyone. Glad you're with us on this, the In the Garden program, a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church, located right here in the heart of beautiful Lynchburg, Virginia. Very easily found, one block off of Lakeside Drive. We're near the main entrance to Lynchburg College. Come over and experience what God is doing and the blessing that He is pouring out. We've got a great event coming up on October the 23rd, and we want to invite you to be a part of that. It's going to be our homecoming. It's going to be a great day, great message, great music, and we're going to have a time of fellowship after the morning worship service, and we'll be eating and having a great time around the table. Hope you can be a part of it. That's October the 23rd. Of course, it's going to be a day of festivities, and we'd love for you to be right in the midst of it all. We'd like for you today to continue to tune in today to Alive TV and to this, this church program. And may it be a bless your heart. And all the other great programs that come on Alive TV, may they also encourage and bless your heart, your life, and your family. We uh, want to remind you today that you'll, you're welcome here. We would love for you to come. Come and see what God's doing and may he mightily bless you. Now we're going to be going into the pages of God's Word from the book of Jeremiah today in chapter 2. And we're talking about the fountain of living water. And I'm glad today that we have a source of refreshment, a source of help. And that refreshment is the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for the message and may your heart be filled up with His grace and His goodness today is my prayer. God bless you mightily. May you today enjoy a good time in God's presence. Children said, Amen. Praise the Lord. King David was a man that God loved dearly. And David knew God's power in his life. 
with one small stone, God helped him slay that giant. And with God's help, he ruled with power and might. Oh, but in a time of weakness, David fell. And his fellowship was broken with the Father. Broken and alone, like a child without a home. David cried, restored the joy I had with you. Restoration, his redeeming grace, his best. It's never ending, accepting grace and mercy, full and free. We're forgiven, mistakes that we have made have been forgotten. Somewhere beneath the sea of God's forgetfulness. In His love and His restoration, when memories of Your face, you know Satan says, "Hey, God is so done with you. The victories you once had." Fading words. All your hopes and gone. You don't know what to do. Just remember his salvation. It's eternal. And he does not walk away because you fall. He wants to give you more than you ever had before. And he longs to hold you close and walk with you. God's love is strong enough to save this world from sin. So surely his restoring power can lift the fallen man. Restoration, his restoring power. It's never ending, accepting grace and mercy, full and free. We're forgiven, the mistakes that we have made have been forgotten, somewhere beneath the sea of God's forgetfulness. Oh, we can rest in His love. Well, we're forgiven. The mistakes that we have made have been forgotten. Somewhere beneath the sea of God's forgetfulness. Oh, we can rest. In His love and His restoration,
of living water, Jeremiah chapter 2, Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 13 this morning, sharing the word of God. The word of God says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem saying, thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not uh, sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend, even shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and, and are become vain? Neither say they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a, a land of deserts and, and of pits, through a land of drought and, and of shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through, and where no man dwell? And, behold, and I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, but when ye entered, ye defiled my land." And you made mine heritage an abomination. The priest said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew not, knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that did not profit, or do not profit. Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over of the isles, of Chittim, 
and see and send unto Kedar and consider diligently and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are not yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be ye horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that cannot Whole water. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. Father, we thank you that your word brings, Lord, revelation. It brings, Lord, separation. It brings deliverance, and it brings blessings. I pray right now in Jesus' name that our hearts will be attuned to what you are speaking to us today. May, Lord, today you get honor and glory from this message. And, Lord, may the people receive the message of the Lord that will transform and change their life to walk after the things of the Lord, to seek the fountain of living water, and to live for the Lord who is high and lifted up. Have your way and bless hearts and lives is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in the rank and the file of spirituality today, it has become obvious that Christians and Christianity is basically living in the desert of our days. It seems like that there's a dry season in our land, and there's just seemingly one thing after another that we face in life, that there's no end to it in one, one sense of the speaking today. Life seems to be filled with the dust and the dirt and the trials and the tragedies of life, and we look and we seek and we try to find, and it seems like there's just no answer. It seems the only thing that is flowing out of the lives on in, or in the lives today of the Christians are things of tears and of burdens and pains. And it seems like people are just going from one stress to another, from one trial to another, from one heartbreak to another. And it just seems like it's become a season of desperation and a season of difficulty and a season of valleys and parchment and a season today that Satan just wreaks havoc in the hearts and the homes and the lives of people. But today, as we see many things that are happening in our nation, and you know, we just heard about the issue that is going on with, with the gasoline and the, and the, and the pipeline issue and, and, and how it will affect many of our states and affect the many people. And we're hearing all the legal and all the political uh, rhetoric and, and things of this nature. But this morning, I want you to lay aside politicians and I want you to lay aside platforms of politicians. I want you to lay aside anger and the arrogance today concerning our national pride and how it's just been a travesty and of judgment of justice and how it's just been a shame upon the red, white, and the blue, the things that we've seen happen within the ranks of sports and sports media today. And along with all the other consuming facts that we're facing, uh, our nation is in a very desperate time and a very needful time. But the question is asked, though, and this is something that we have to grasp, and we are asking, and I hear it on the streets, people are asking, so where is the Lord? Where's the Lord in all that is happening? Where's the Lord in the tragedies and the trials that people are going through? Where are the, where's the Lord in the things that people today as a nation that we're facing and what's going to happen in the political arena and what's going to happen economically and what's going to happen morally in our nation today? Where is the Lord in all these things? Let me assure you today, he is very much alive and he is very much still on the throne today and he is still very much in control. Even when our nation, our world is out of control, there's a God and you can look up and rejoice today because I believe today as the word declares you can rejoice in this season that we're in for our redemption draweth nigh. It is a time where it's pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are times it appears that the heavens have become silent and as has been said they become as brass and, and it could be that, that Christianity is facing some of the same components as we read here that Israel, Israel was facing and that God Ask Jeremiah, he says, why has my people forsaken me? Why has my people forsaken the things of God? Why have they turned their back on the word of God? 
Why have they turned their back on the holiness of God? Why are they not living the lives that bring honor and praise and glory to the name of the Lord? Let me assure you today, as the word declares, that God has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that we read about in the book of Jeremiah is the same God today. Thank God today we have a consistent, faithful God. I'm glad that we've got a God that doesn't give up on us even when we give up on him. I'm glad that we've got a God who's always there. I'm glad that we've got a God who, as the word declares, is faithful and true today. So early in Israel's history, God's people, they trusted in the Lord. They had a deep, heartfelt devotion to the Lord. They had an uncompromising allegiance to the things of the Lord Jesus. And so now we find that the whole house of Israel has forsaken God. But you know, it seems like it's just a continual cycle for the people of God. It seems like as you read through the pages of God's word, this has been a problem that Israel has had from the very beginning. And it seems like they've forsaken God and they've gone to the gods of this world. Well, my friend, not only has the Israelites gone to the gods of this world, our nation has gone to the gods of this world. I mean, we're following everything that's fleshly instead of following the one today that is holy and high and lifted up. Today, Israel has broken her covenant, her promise with God. And even at times when, you know, God remained faithful to them, they removed that faithfulness unto the Lord. I'm going to tell you, it's easy today if you're not careful. You can fall into that same vein today. You can get your eyes off of the Lord and you can fall for the vices and the enticements of the world. And the next thing that you find yourself in, you find yourself in a mess. But I'm glad today that God is a God that still delivers. I'm glad that we've got today a God whose hand is not shortened, that it cannot reach us where we are and meet the need that is in our life. I'm glad that we've got a God that will initiate and bring about a change in our life if we will desire. Now, in verse 13, Israel committed two evils as we was reading there. One is they brought, uh, they thought they could build basically the cistern without God. They thought that they could do what they wanted to, and you know, Jesus said in John 15 and 5, he says, without me, you can do nothing. Folks, let me tell you today, you may think you've got all the wisdom and power and education. You've got all the ability and everything else that life can afford you. But if you don't have the presence and the power of God in your life, you're missing the most important thing. Today, you can only do because that's what Paul was saying in Philippians 4.13 when he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And so today, he is our helper, isn't he? He is our hope. That's why David could declare, he looked unto the hills from which cometh his help. He said, my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. This same God is your helper today. This same God that brought the children of Israel through the wilderness. The same God that brought them out of Egypt. The same God that supplied their every need the same God that put food on that table, the same God that covered them with his grace is the same God that we serve today. And I'm glad that he's a loving God that today will meet your every need according to his riches and glory. But they found themselves, they were trying to live life apart from God. You can't do it. You don't have the answers. You don't have the solutions. You don't have the know-how. The second thing is that they built a system that could not contain or hold the water. And so whenever we try to do things ourselves, our way, and we exclude the leadership of God, let me tell you what, it's not going to work. If you don't involve the Lord in your life, it's not going to work anyway. Folks, you can go out and you can have all the ability and you can have all the resources that you can find. But if you don't have the Lord, you're missing the most important thing. Amen. You need the Lord in your life. So whenever you try to replace God in a culture in which we live in today, in our eyes, basically, and forsaken the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and this is happening in the ranks of Christianity today. We're consumed with the things of the world. We spend more time talking about sports and everything else in this world than talking about the God of deliverance. We spend more time today consumed with the things of the world than being consumed with the thing that will change your life. And that's the word of God. 
We spend more time in front of a television set than we spend in front of a word called the Word of God. We spend more time today entertaining the things of the world than entertaining the Holy Spirit in our lives that He could be glorified and exalted in our life. Amen. So too many churches and people today are pursuing today a ceremony rather than pursuing Christ. Let me tell you what, you can have all the ceremonies, you can have all the book of prayers, you can have all the rituals that you want to, but if you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. Amen. Folks, we need today the freedom of the Spirit of God. There's an abundance of height, but there's a big shortfall of holiness within the ranks of God's people today. We've developed and we try to deliver our lives into all these steps and procedures and flip this page and flip that page and do this and do that. And we've tried to find every answer and solution and we've read every book, listened to every CD, listened to every motivational speaker, and we're still in the same mess that we've always been in. I'm telling you today we need to start listening to the God of heaven. And we need to start today to put in our confidence and our faith and our trust in him. We have never today going to make the, we've not made the first step. You can have all the steps you want to, but if you don't have the first step, it's not going to work. So therefore the first step says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross daily and follow me. It didn't say just take up the cross at salvation. It says take up the cross daily. It doesn't mean you're getting saved over and over and over again. It means today that you're setting your sights on the Lord and that he's first in your life. Let me ask you, is he? Have you today really taken today what Jesus said in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? I mean today, what is the priority of your life? Are you just going through the motions? Are you today just hanging out with a crowd that goes to church? I mean, really today, have we come to the place and the time to take up the cross and follow Jesus? Because if you're following the Lord, it's going to require sacrifice. It's going to require that you're going to go through the valley experiences of life. But hallelujah unto the name of the living God. There's a God who goes with you today. And there's a God that never leaves you nor forsakes you. There's a God that loves you today. Amen. So we spend a lot of time focusing on our feelings. And we focus upon those things that we think. But folks, we are ignoring the fact that we have tried to replace God. And not only has our society and our culture and our generation, but I'm afraid even in the ranks of the halls of the church today, we've tried to replace God with something else. There is no God like our God. And you must put him first. So the word of God says, a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So today, if your focus and your attention is on the world, your focus and your attention is not on God. Jesus Christ, I, I promise you this on the authority of his word, is coming back for a people that have been washed in his blood. What do you mean, preacher? I mean you've been born again. I mean, you've been saved, hallelujah. And today that the scarlet sins of our life, thank God, have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. As the old songwriter wrote, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but, nothing but, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you're sitting in this church or today in whatever capacity that you're in, and you're not saved today. I'm telling you, you're dying and you're going to hell. And one day you're going to die. And we don't know when that death date will come. The word says it is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. You're going to face death. The question is, are you going to face it with Jesus? And if you don't know him today, I invite you. Come to the realization we're all sinners and come short of the glory of God. Come to the fact that Jesus died on the cross for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Give your heart to the Lord. Pray today and ask God to forgive you, to come into your heart and save you. And on the authority of God's word, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Amen. So to accomplish God's word, we must preach and practice God's word. You can't just say, well, I got a Bible and I believe the Bible. See, you, you can do that. Any, any person can do that. The proof is, are you living the word? The proof is, is this priority. The truth is today, if God is not first in your life, then where is he? 
What is your priority of the Lord? So today, we, we've got to preach Jesus crucified, dead, buried, and risen again. But we've got to live what we say we preach. Amen. In today's church environment, the cross is considered offensive to the world. So what does the church do? It compromises the gospel. It kicks out the church, it kicks out the blood, it kicks out the cross. And we try to make it feel good, make it transparent, make, make it a touch of the world, make people feel good in their flesh. We're not here to make your flesh feel good. If the Spirit of God's not on you and working on you and you haven't reached, listen, none of you in this room, including self, none of us have reached the place of perfection in your life. You are still a sinner. You still have shortcomings. You're not as perfect as you think you may be. But thank God there's only one that can blot out your sins. And there's only one that can put you on the right standing. And his name is still Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Amen. Put him first in your life. So Paul said, you know, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming back for church. Yeah, we have been pressed, but we're not crushed. We may have been persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We may have been struck down, but thanks God we're not destroyed. So a church that has endured the trials of life that we all face, being found faithful. And that's the key. What is God going to say to you when you stand before him? You can't live without the fountain of living water. You can't live without Christ. The people of God in Jeremiah's day, they, they walked away from the fountain of the living water of God. The people walked away from the satisfaction that only came from the presence of God. And let me tell you, folks, you will not find satisfaction in the world. You're only going to find dissatisfaction. Amen. The people then are the same people that are today. They, they basically are not content. People are just restless, and people today are not satisfied, and they're not content. And let me tell you, if there's discontentment in your life, it's because you walked away from the presence of the living God. You have left the contentment that God placed there for something else that will not satisfy so the world will not today meet the need of your life. It will not today give you what you need to live the Christian life. He, today, there, you've got to remember, and as the word says, he is the vine and we are the branches. And we've got to abide in him if he's going to abide in us. So Jesus said, if you will abide in me and you will stay connected, he said, nothing shall be impossible to you. Amen. Thank God we've got a God that can work through our lives. You know, look into the depths of our society today. What do you see? Well, I'll tell you what you see. You see wretchedness. You see shambles. You see evil. You see sin. You see shame. You see vileness and wickedness. And that's what you get in a society that doesn't want God. And that's exactly where we are. We are in a society that doesn't want God. In the home today, the family without God is reflected in the fact that seven out of ten divorces, uh, seven out of ten marriages end in divorce. That's pretty stout statistics. So in today's culture, this is, and you know, I've heard, well, the, the numbers are improving. You know why the numbers are improving? Because people are living together rather than getting married. And so, yeah, that'll drive the divorce rate down but you're still living in sin. Amen. We want education without God. Let me tell you, you're not going to have God's wisdom apart from God. They, they sit in classrooms. They're able to take a cell phone, and I'm telling you some amazing things that they can do with a cell phone. I still, I mean, I'm good if I can text, take a phone call, check messages or something like that. That's about the extent of my, my um, capability on a cell phone. But things sit in classroom, they can text, and you know, they don't even realize that they've been, back, been created by God for more than that. Amen. Folks, I'm going to tell you, they can take a cell phone, what's those little things called, um, emojis? And they, and they can tell you every emoji that's on a cell phone. I just found out what emoji was. I found out you could hit those little smiley faces down there, and all of a sudden they do appear in a text. Amen. You better make sure you hit the right face, though, before you send it. 
But it's amazing. They can tell you what every emoji is and how to get every technological advancement in a cell phone that you can imagine, but they can't even tell you when the Declaration of Independence was signed and where it was signed at. You know, I didn't come to complain this morning. Listen, but I've come today as a messenger of the Master to tell you today that we've got to get back to God. And we're missing the mark. We're missing the mark as Christians today. Our focus and our attention is not on the Lord. Back to the God of the Bible. Back today to the God of righteousness. Back to the God of holiness. And back to the God even of the Ten Commandments. Oh, Old Testament, Pastor. It's still in the Word of God. And it's a standard to live by. Back to loving God. Back to living for God. Back today to the house of God. And back today even to the altars of prayer. Amen. So to the fountain of living water, I believe it's calling us back today to the fundamentals of our faith of getting back to God. Now I know today, maybe this is not a shouting message, but I'm going to tell you, it's still the word of God. And folks, we need the word of God to set us free. If you're bound up and tied up in the world and in yourself and everything else today, listen, you're not living in the freedom that God wants you to live in. God wants you free, but you cannot have it if you don't come back to God and give him all your life today, amen. In the biblical days, they worshiped idols and they worshiped statues, but today, you know, our society, you know what it worships? It doesn't worship Shinto shrines or idols or wooden statues or things of this nature. It's worshiping self. Everything's about self. Our problem is we're no longer making worship part of our life. We just come and show up, and that's it. See, it's just not prof professing Christ. Well, you got to possess him before you can really profess him. you got to have him in your life. you got to live for him today. We give an imagination today or give an imagery today that we love the Lord, but that's all it is. It's an, it's an image. The true fact is it's not evident in our life. To be a Christian today is not imagery. It's an example. It's to live what you say that you believe. And we lift up Christ. We lift up his name. We lift up our praise unto his name. And we lift up one another. Hey, we all stand in the need of prayer, don't we? Anybody in here don't need prayer? We all need it, don't we? And we need to lift up one another. You know, I can tell when people are praying for me. And I also can tell when people are not praying for me. And folks, I tell you, we are to pray one for another. That is a command of God. And if we're not praying, then we are sinning one against another. So Christians need to be in a position of prayer. And we need to pray and we need to call on the Lord. We will serve the one true God or we're going to serve the many gods of this world. But we've got to make up our mind who we're going to serve. 156,000 people last weekend gathered down south here in Bristol, Tennessee, Bristol, Virginia, whatever one it is, at a racetrack to watch a football game. It was the largest attended college ball game, I think, in history. That's what I heard. But, you know, and people stayed there for hours. They spent hours in getting in a parking lot. They spent hours sitting there and watching guys run up and down the field. No disrespect to Hokie fans, but they watched the Hokies couldn't hold on to the ball. We, we, they did better yesterday. And then they spent hours trying to get out of there. I think y'all ran into traffic going down last Sunday, didn't you? Where's all those people going? Oh, boy, I'm telling you, it was flip-flopping in the wind, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and, and I'll, I'll guarantee you, every person that paid the money went into the arena, watched that game, and I did notice one thing. I saw some of the highlights as it got towards the end of the game. That 156,000 kind of watered down, and people were getting out of there, I guess, and going back to the hotel rooms or something. But you know, people went to that game, they paid the money, they, they went there, and, and they... they ate and paid, you know, 10 bucks for a Coke or whatever and a hot dog or something like that, and, and, and they didn't complain. 
But you know what? 156,000 people went to that event. And we come to church, and if a preacher keeps us too long, we get bent out of shape. Amen. What happens when we worship the one true God? David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of, his, all of his benefits. He says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. You know, when we confess and forsake today, that is where the Lord Jesus Christ today can get to today to wash your sins and cleanse your soul and put you in a right standing before Almighty God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we got a God that still forgives. And I'm glad he'll blot out your every sin. He'll remove your every iniquity. Thank God he will heal you. With his stripes you're healed. There's no better doctor than Dr. Jesus. Amen. God sent his son. He took our stripes. He took our shame today. And praise God, let me tell you what. He did it all that we could be healed of every infirmity, of every sickness, of every sin, of every trial today. You know, I'm glad today for the grace of God because I'm glad that where our sins did abound, his grace did much more abound. Oh, friend, let me tell you what. He redeems us and listen to what he does. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen. You know, this crown is not a party favor that you buy at the party store. It denotes today that your redemption, and it denotes today who you belong to, that you belong to the Lord. The one who was worthy reached down and he took our unworthiness and our shackles and our chains and our sin and our shame. Thank God, and he nailed it to the cross. And then he turns and he says, now you're free. And if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. So this then gives us the authority of his name and the authority of his word. And so therefore today, when you love and you serve the one true living God, you find there's only one that satisfies me, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is what David was proclaiming in the 23rd Psalm. When he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, oh, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thank God he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He anoints our head with oil. Our cup runs over. This is all because of the authority of his name and his word. And then he crowns it with surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. He's a friend that is closer than a brother friend. And when the storm clouds gather, he will be your shelter in the time of storm. When the battles are raging and when things are going bad, he'll be your sword and he'll be your shield. He'll never fail you. He is the God who will satisfy you, bless the Lord. Folks, let me tell you what. You've got to believe. You've got to believe today that he is the one true living God, that he is a high tower today. He is the deliverer. He is our salvation. He is the rock of our salvation. He is our strength today. He is the true living water. And today, it's only found in a personal, devoted life today and relationship with God that all comes through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We must stop replacing God with convenience and stand up for the convictions that we've got in accordance with God's word. We must stop replacing God today with prophets rather than purity. We've got to stop replacing God with entitlements rather than responsibility. Amen. We must return to the fountain of living water. We must return to the water of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you thirst? Do you thirst for this refreshing water today? Refreshing water of power and presence and provision of grace and goodness that comes from, from God. Today you can drink from these gushing wells of spiritual rejuvenation. Oh, he will lift you up. Amen. Jesus says, come. Come today. He says, come now and drink from the fountain 
of living water. The living water of salvation. The living water of Jesus Christ. The living water of healing. The living water of deliverance. Today, I invite you to return to the fountain of living water that's only found in Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads for a moment? Father, I don't know what need may be in the hearts of your people. But I do know today there's a God who will meet that need. There's a God who will supply that need. Maybe there's someone here today that doesn't know you as their personal Savior. Right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you've never invited him into your heart and your life, you don't know today that you're saved, I won't do nothing to embarrass you. I want to pray for you. I just ask you to do one thing. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Preacher, pray for me. I don't know that if I'm saved or not. Pray for me today. Pray for me today. Father, I just call upon you this morning. And I know that you can meet every need and we need to come back to the altars, back to the fountain of the living water and crown you first and foremost in our life. Have your will in your way, Lord. And as we stand to our feet today, Lord, may the Spirit of God, may the power of Christ himself come down in our midst today. Oh, Lord, we cry out to you this morning. And we know that you'll meet our every need you, Lord, will lift our every burden. You'll forgive our every sin. And, Lord, you will turn everything around. Have mercy, O Lord, is my prayer today. In Jesus' name. Would you come right now? It's God's calling today. Would you come at an altar and pray? Come to the fountain of living water.